Hey, in this episode of Restore with Christine, we're a little under the weather, and when doing work that's not so attractive, it's just on the front frame rail trying to get it straightened out so we can fit the bumper in. But I tell you what, we used some old race car tricks with some plumb bobs, straight lines, squares, got all this dimensionally correct, straight as an arrow, ready to go, holding the bumper on nice and straight. It looks good. If you're interested in seeing how we got this done this week, stay tuned. Alright, finally, welcome back to another episode of Restoring Christine. It's been a good while since I've been in the garage, but it's for all good reasons. They're family related, but they're all positive things. As I told you in the last episode and a little short in between, my son, my youngest, has been traveling with Music City Drum and Bugle Corps out of Nashville, Tennessee. World class DCI Corps. They uh, just competed in championships in Indianapolis and ended up finishing 17th, which is actually a great finish for that unit. Um, but he went straight from that to having a report back to college and mom and dad, being the good parents that we are, had to take his car and all of his belongings for his dorm room and hump them back to school while he was flying directly in and the poor guy went from the frying pan right into the fire. <laughs> he, just, he just had to get start school the very next day. Um, so anyway, hats off to him. Great job this summer, but it's kept me occupied. Now I can finally turn my attention back to Christine. So let me show you what we're going to do today. All right, the last episode, we fit the front cap onto Christine, and we got all the fender gaps, door gaps, hood, got all of that aligned, at least roughed in, enough to where I know it's straight enough to where when I uh, put, do final assembly before I do body filler, um, that, that all of this is going to work out. So, but if you also remember back when I painted the frame, I painted the frame with pour 15, and I'll put a picture of a uh, thumbnail up here and a link over here. When I painted the frame with Pour 15, I left this one bumper horn, this frame horn on the driver's side. I left that uncoated because it was bent and wonky a little bit. So what I have to do is I have to go get my bumper. And I'm going to test fit my bumper up here and try to get the, these two things straightened out, the two horns, and make sure that they're aligned. And I'm going to straighten that out a little bit and do a little bit of welding on the frame. Today is going to be about repairing this, this frame horn getting that cleaned up and we'll see if we can't get uh, the front end one step closer but <clears throat> one thing you may notice I'm gonna apologize right now I'm a little froggy <laughs> I am under the weather no it's not COVID uh, I was tested and it's not but it's just a classic head cold who knew you could still get those <laughs> with everything that we've been doing to stay clean it's like for two years now I haven't been sick <laughs> and now I'm sick I'm like what's what's going on so anyway i'm in the garage i'm hurting a little bit i'm going to be a little gravelly and uh one last thing is my channel right at this moment has 970 subscribers 970 at least as i'm shooting this so hopefully i don't run everybody off with a bad voice or a weak episode but i'm going to try my best to make everybody happy with this one let's just go All right, so I'm at the warehouse where Christine had been living for a few years while she was in storage. And this is where I keep the cutlass. And if you're familiar with my channel, uh, a, a year ago in October, had a number of uh, videos on the cutlass when we went to cruising the coast. That was originally my goal to get Christine ready for cruising the coast this year in October in Mississippi. That's not going to happen. But we'll be getting the cutlass ready um, to go before too long because that's just in a, a month and a half maybe, something like that. Um, so anyway, but what we're here for is we're here for the parts for Christine. We're here for the bumper. And I need to uh, dig through this stack of miscellaneous pieces, parts that I have. And of course, the bumper is very easy to spot. But that's my front bumper. It's got the two, the two horns on the front. I'm going to take that home. You can see all the rest of the parts that I have here. Some of these will go back on Christine. Some of them will not. Um, you know, a lot of these, I, I didn't throw them away until, I didn't, or I didn't want to get rid of them until I knew that I was in good shape with replacements um, and whatever else I need. All my stainless trim, uh, interior pieces, parts, glass. So, all right, so I'm gonna take the bumper 
we'll load it up in the truck and we'll get back home and see if we can't get the front end um, and continue to, to realign things and get the get the frame straightened out and hopefully that'll all work out. All right, I'm one step closer. I'm mounted the bumper. It's starting to look more and more like a 56 Bel Air. Let me show you where I'm at. So the bumper is on and um, I'll admit, this bumper that, that uh, I've got for Christine, it's missing the two horns. The two horns I have off on the side right now, I don't have them mounted. But um, it centers nicely. I checked it. So here's the center of the hood and the center of the bumper. And they're right there. You know, so that's, that's right on the mark. Um, the other thing that I've, I'm working with is this gap between the, the hood and the fender and the top of the bumper and the same on that side. And I'm trying to measure all those things and it's all over the place. Um, let's see a tape measure. Let's take it right at the at the frame horn. So the frame horn, it's like nine and three quarters. With the other one. And it is roughly nine and a quarter. So there's a half inch difference. This is a half, this side, the passenger side is a half inch higher than that side. So it's probably a half inch is probably a quarter and a quarter. So that's not a whole lot, it's a little bit, but then when you look at these brackets, you can see that um, they were trying to make up for something because the brackets, look how, look how far that bracket dips down. So that bracket needs to come up and the other one is a little bent. So I'm gonna see what I can do with this, but I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna straighten this yet. Uh, the, the ends, the wraparounds, the wraparounds here, it's hard, it's, it's hard to measure this Hey, there's my reflection. <laughs> it's hard to measure this because this, as this comes around, you know, this is really floppy. It, you can move that all around. And I know there's brackets that hold it in place. So, and also when you loosen that, it, it has a tendency to, to allow this to rack. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to play with this a little bit and see what we ended up doing. Uh, come up with a plan. But that's what I'm working with. Well, I decided to take the bumper completely off, including the two mounts the two brackets that, that uh, mount to the frame and the mount to the bumper this it's raining outside i mean it's like thundering lightning so it's gonna sound ominous anyway um i took off the brackets with the bumper and you can see now that the bumper's sitting flat on the floor you can see the brackets are kind of wonky i mean look at that other bracket over down there you know it's pitched up this one's pitched flat so I don't, this bumper's gotta, gotta have some kind of a twist or a warp or something in it. I'm measuring these horns, and the horns look like they're doing pretty good with the exception of one thing. This one on the passenger side is racked a little bit this way, it's twisted. So I'm gonna pull this twist out of this with some heat, and um, I'm gonna make sure that these two are um, squared and centered, and I'm gonna straighten them out and make sure that they're, they're at the same height. And I think they are. I don't have to go very much. You can see this side, if it is if it is bent. Vertically, it's not by much. There's a little bit of wave in the bottom of the flange, but it's it's not much. And maybe that twist is all what this is. It's maybe, maybe that twist is causing that. So I'm going to go ahead and twist this back straight so that this line here is, is vertical and not, not on an angle. And then I'm gonna make sure that they're at both the same height and that they're saying they're equidistant from the center of the car, which I just need to do some layout work. So here we go. How about this tool? Back in the day when I used to race on dirt street stocks, this is what I'd use as a uh, surveying plumb bob. So you use a string line and you pull you pull a string line down and put a mark on the floor, mark on the floor, and then make sure your frame is square, make sure your axles are square. Um, so. I'm going to use this. I'm going to transfer marks to the floor so that I can measure everything instead of it being up in the air. So let's uh, let me go ahead and work on some benchmarks, and we'll we'll take it to the next step. All right, there's a lot going on here, um, and I've I've got a lot of layout work here in the floor. But just to show you what I'm doing is you take the plumb bob and you find a reference point. Um, and you, whichever one you want to use and like in this case for example I wanted to 
to the, the circle on the front of the frame horn. And so what I did is I just dropped the plumb bob off the center of that and I went down to the floor off the center and I found where that line was. So I put a mark on the floor. And I did the same thing on the other side. So it's the same reference point, same reference point. And on the floor I drew a chalk line straight across. So this point in the frame rail, that point in the frame rail, that's going to give me a horizontal line. Now I need a, a center line down the center of the frame. So I, I climbed back on my motor cradle and I found center of that and I dropped the plumb bob down in the back, same thing, put a mark on the floor, came up here into the front and now, now this I'm using the body. You know, so I know where the fenders are, I know where the frame, I mean, um, where the hood is. So I did the same thing up here and I took the plumb bob and I ran the plumb bob down from the center line of the hood and put a mark on the floor there. And when I put a mark on the floor there, you see it dan dangling. So it's not touching the floor, see? So once it's sta stable, that's when you put your, put your mark. So I popped the line basically from the rear chalk mark to this chalk mark and that gave me the center line of the frame, at least in this front section. And then I had a horizontal alignment of the frame right here on these two common bolt holes in the front. So I struck a line, struck a line, and now I'm checking it. Um, these two are a little bit further apart, one 17 and three quarters, one is 17 and three eighths. Uh, so it's, it's three eighths of an inch out, which means it's three sixteenths of an inch out on both sides um, was. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get rid of all this Gorilla Ugly on this driver's side frame horn. And I, I just don't want to put it in the wrong position. So I checked this, I took a carpenter square, and I checked that, and threw it onto the two lines. And if you don't have a carpenter square, you probably do. But it looks square from just throwing a, a carpenter square on it. <clears throat> well, you can also do it dimensionally um, using our old friend trigonometry, which um, a right angle has one leg of three, another leg of four, and the diagonal measurement between the two is five. So you can proportion that up. I mean, three, four, five, three inches, four inches, five inches, it doesn't matter if you go um, six inches, eight inches, 10 inches, uh, you know, as, as long as you proportion it. So I measured over eight inches from the center line, then I measured six inches this way, and I measured between the two points, and lo and behold, what do I have? 10, three, four, five. So this, that square, even though this looks ugly as hell, everything is pretty straight with the exception of the twist. Uh, sorry about my voice again. It is it is it's given out. Uh, but I'm going to take some of this apart, and now I, I know what I need to do. Uh, I'm, I'm I feel pretty good about it. It's not nearly as bad as I feared. Um, I'm betting that a lot of my trouble is in that bumper. I'll bet that bumper's got all kinds of twists. It's flimsy. It really, really is. I'll I'm really seriously thinking about getting a new bumper. Talk to a chrome shop. Um, the nearest one to me which is an hour and a half away um, and I when I was building my cutlass the guy said you know listen if uh, unless you're gonna do like world of wheels show quality uh, he said you'd be better off just buying a new bumper so I think that's what I might end up doing is I'll just end up instead of having this one re -chromed, I'll just get a new one uh, we will see I don't know uh, I'm still chewing on that so let me go ahead and get get this set up and pull the hood off I'm gonna pull the cradle off and I'm gonna start uh, twisting and bending here we go. straight up and down now. I got those waves out of the bottom. That's the first thing I did was I pull those out and they kind of straightened it out a little bit. And then I heated it around and then pried it and, and finally it took, it took a little bit of weight, but I got it, it's twisted. I mean, it looks right. This, this looks really good. So um, it's too hot to throw a string on it. Um, so I'm gonna turn my attention over there and then uh, we'll, we'll continue on. All right, this is where all the ugly is. Looks like something's out of alignment. Like when you see this, these two pieces used to be connected and something must be pushed pretty pretty hard. 
they cut out a big window here. That's solid on that side. But this side, they cut out a big window. This is pried off here where that's not. It's, it was touching a little bit better than that. They welded it here. They welded it on the top. So there's only so much I can do with it. But I just don't want this to be all like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to probably heat. I'm going to heat this. I'm going to take a clamp, pinch this tight. And that'll shove this back a little bit. And then I'll cut this and then splice these two back together. <clears throat> and it's got a little bit of a tiny, like, tiny little twist. The top is out a little bit. And this is the one that's short. So what I might end up having to do is I might have to pry in between these two. I measured on my bumper. And I'm going to match the, the distance from here to here. And what I'll do is whichever side is out of center, I'm going to heat that side and pry against the other side and try to shove it so i'll try to get these two dimensions the same and i'll get them to match what the dimensions are between the bumper brackets I don't own a porta porta power jack, um, so I make do with a bottle jack. You can do this; um, it's pretty easy, as long as you put an, a, a strut in here to, that won't kink. Uh, you can you can use tubes. So this is a one inch square tube, an inch and a half square tube, or an inch and a quarter. I don't know what that is, but it's shoved in, and this is just big enough to go over the barrel. So when it does that, it couples it and it keeps it from from flippity fluing and flopping out of the way. So what I'm doing right now is I'm jacking. Um, pressure in it and I am separating the two frame horns ever so slightly and I keep checking them against my marks on the floor and both of these so what I'm going to do is I am going to put pressure on this and push it out and I want to do it on this one because this was the one that was closer so I want to do this one this is still weak before I weld that and what I'll do is once I get pressure on it in order to set it I'm going to take the torch and heat it, and that way it'll relax. It'll relax in the widen, widened position, and um, it'll, it ought to hold. So as it is right now, every time I take the pressure off, it, it relaxes right back to where it was. So I'm going to try to get these two close, and then I'm going to heat it. So let me keep going with that. Let me show you what I got going on. So if you look, I'll run my string, my string line down here. i got a mark on the floor, and that's what I'm keeping track of is how far how far off from this mark am I? And that's almost my target, right where it's sitting. So if it relaxed right where it was, which is a little bit long of that mark, if it relaxed, if it relaxed right there, it would be fine. Uh, that's, a, that's the right dimension. It wants to be like 35 and 3 quarters apart. So that's like 17 and 7 eighths, which is perfect. So if I can get it to relax right there, I'll be fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the torch, heat this, and let it find a, uh, find its way. Jack jump. And I'm right over where I want to be. So let me see if I relax this jack completely. I don't know how much it's going to bounce back. You saw it, it jumped. Oh, it moved a lot. No, it didn't relax it enough. Woo! Yeah. It came back a good half inch. Put some more tension on it, do it again. All right, let me work with this, and then when I get it, I'll uh, kick back, the, kick the counter back on. All right, well, I was on to something, but um, 
I had a problem that I had to relieve. You remember I showed you these two pieces were overlapped by about a quarter inch? Now they're not. I had to cut this free and then pull this whole horn out because now this is almost perfectly uh, straight in this direction, which is what you want. And I measured the dimension from here to here and then the same at the back. So now that and that are parallel and they're both the right distance apart. They're the right clearance apart, which is almost 36 inches. So what I need to do now is I need to weld this in position right where it is. <clears throat> this looks like it's a it's quarter inch short. The bottom is touching. I'll have to make that up some sort of way. But um, yeah, now, now we, we're getting it. So this will get this whole uh, frame horn straightened out. Let me go ahead and start welding this up. Man, I tell you what, when it's not sheet metal, it welds real easy. <laughs> this thick metal is so easy to weld. I'm able to bridge that gap. I'm literally building it. Um, have this welded in, I need to weld the bottom. Finish welding that. I'm gonna clean this up after I get it relaxed and then I'm gonna build something back in there. But uh, let me go ahead and put it on Hyperlabs, you can watch. Got it welded. Haven't cleaned it up yet. Still want to put a little patch piece in there, I think. I don't know if you're going to see it, but let me clean it up. But let me relax the load and let's see what dimension we got. Well, look, it didn't even move. <clears throat> there it is. All right. So now, if I did, if I did everything right. Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> Man, this uh, this is something else. This head cold is killing me. I'm. A trooper today. I deserve a gold star for coming into the garage. And if you want the truth, I really didn't want to let you guys down. <laughs> That's really what it was. Let me see if I can't get this like it's right on top of it. There we go. Getting closer. Ah! Yeah, something like that. All right. So those are my targets down there. How close am I? Yep, if anything. Nope, that's dead on the mark. Dead on the mark. That is what I want right there. Let me take you off here. You can see. I actually move you back a little bit. There you go. Woohoo! Right where we want to be. We are in line. I'm liking it. Alright, let's wrap this up. straight let's weld it up grind it down hit it with a little uh, anti-rust some rust converter a few minutes ago we hit it with some primer primer makes everything look better right and we hit it with a little bit of primer just to seal this up but we're one step closer man oh my, my, my voice is gone um, I appreciate you sticking with me today man um, I know. It's been a few weeks since I've been able to really work in the garage and do anything with Christine. Um, I'm at an awkward place. I'm at a place where I don't really have, um, things that I can work on that are, like, really meaty. That, you know, like, oh, here's how you do this. I mean, what I have to do is, like, mainly task-driven, you know? So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to call this. This is going to be, like, hidden under the bumper, the shroud, the radiator. You know, radiator's right here. Nobody's going to see any of this. <laughs> so that's going to probably do it. Um, I think it looks good. You know, I decided to go ahead and throw the bumper on it. And let's see. And I tell you what, man, these brackets are sitting so much more nicer. They just really are. I mean, they are fitting a lot better than what they did before. Uh, I was fighting to get the bolts when I, when I first brought the bumper home. I was fighting to get the bolts in. Now you can see how the tail drops down. But this, this bumper's got to be bent. Uh... You know, here, same thing. It's got to be bent. So, but now I've got at least, at least the brackets are in the bolt holes, which they weren't before. And, and this looks a lot, a lot, so much better. So, all right. 
All right, <laughs> that's gonna do it. I need to go in and take some cold medicine or something, man. I'm, I'm shot. But glad you stuck with me today. Appreciate it. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers. I really, really do appreciate everybody that's been along for the ride. We're gonna get this thing done. Um, you know, the Tri Five Nationals were just like a, a week or two weeks ago, and man, I'm thinking maybe that's a target for next year. Maybe we can get Christine up there. Go to I believe it's in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I think. Anyway. We'll see if we can do that. That's within that's within shooting range of New Orleans where I'm at. But I appreciate all you that watch my channel. If you're liking the, the videos, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're really liking the channel, I'd love a subscription. Until next time, take care of yourself. We'll be back real soon. Cheers.